the demonization of masculinity and how it trickles down to schools and sadly trickles down to very playful boys. The demonization of masculinity. Yeah, that surely impacts schools. You know, we saw with the recess how recess got canned. Why was it canned? Well, part of the reason is that masculinity itself has been attacked and demonized. There's something wrong with it. There's something wrong with boys want to go out and run and jump and play, right? All this activity, they don't need that. They can just sit tight. So recess got canned. But in general, masculinity has been attacked all over the place. I mean, fatherhood is seen as unimportant. We've got these single mothers who can do everything, right? The Boy Scouts, <laughs> it's fine for them to have girls now in the Boy Scouts. Crazy, right? I mean, all male spaces have been basically taken away and seen as sexist, right? That's crazy. Whereas at the same time, all female spaces have grown more and more and more female only spaces, female gyms, female that, female everything. And that's just fine. So look at it. The male spaces have been diminished. You know, this is a, another sign of the attack on masculinity. Barbershops. I mean, barbershops used to be places men could gather. Only men. Not anymore. No Way Jose, the Lions Club, Rotary, Kiwanis. You know, even the movie heroes these days, most of them have vaginas. You know, what are you talking about? And male sexuality is under attack. And of course, men are toxic, but at the same time, they're privileged. I mean, think about it, all these different ways that men are attacked and masculinity is attacked. And of course, this plays out on boys because what do boys need in school? They need to be able to move around. They need to be able to move and, and do this and do that. I mean, we know now that, that from the research that you need a break. It's like we saw with the recess stuff. You need a break in order to concentrate. You can't just concentrate for an hour and a half in a row. So boys need to move. Of course, that's been shamed. No, we need to. These active boys, there's something wrong with them. We've pathologized them. We've told them there's something wrong with them because they need to move so much. They're hyper. So let's chemically control them. Let's control them with Ritalin. We'll give them a Ritalin recess. Hi, yay, yay. That's exactly what they're doing. That's what's happening today. We're giving boys a Ritalin recess. You know, no recess, but you take this Ritalin, you'll stop moving around so much. God, I can remember when I was in, in uh, middle school. And if I did something wrong, huh, the coach would say, take a lap, Golden. No, take two, right? I'd be so tired after those two laps. I wouldn't even think of acting out after that. I needed that. I needed someone to say, get off your butt and go do two laps. You screwed up, right? I could think about it the whole time. I was going around and around and around. Gone are those days. You know, now we chemically control the boys by giving them drugs. I mean, we're living in a crazy place, and boys' aggressiveness, of course, is, is just demonized. There's something wrong with these aggressive boys. When actually, you know, the testosterone... It's pushing them to be aggressive, a little bit more aggressive than the girls, and it's pushing them to get up and do things. And, you know, it's interesting. The boys and girls have about the same levels of testosterone. But the boys got a testosterone flood. Most of them did. A testosterone flood in utero. And one of the impacts of that testosterone flood is that flood sensitizes the receptors in the brain to testosterone. So the boys from that point forward will always be more sensitive to testosterone than someone who did not get that flood. And so even though boys and girls have about the same level of testosterone, the boys are probably going to be more juiced by it because of that early sensitization in the brain. Anyway, let's not get too far off the subject here. Of course, boys not talking about their feelings. Oh, there's something wrong with them. They need to be more like girls. You know, the boys are not politically correct, you know. That there's, if only women ruled the world. I mean, basically, boys are politically incorrect. If you're a boy, there's something wrong with you. It's politically incorrect to be a boy. How would you like to go to school to try and learn something when your sex is politically incorrect, while the girl's sex is politically correct? Everyone wants to be like the girls, right? This is crazy. And of course, it all stems from this nutty feminist idea that everything's due to socialization. <clears throat> Just absolute nutty. But that's what they've done. So if only women rule the world, gracious goodness me. So, you know, we can see how the boys' aggressiveness, the boys need to move, 
the boys recess, all of these things have gotten shut down in schools. You don't need a research study to tell you that. But we do need a research study to tell you the subtle things that are happening behind the scenes in schools. So what does the research tell us about boys and schools? Well, it's been quite a bit done, actually. And the first one says, in general, teachers are closer to girls than they are to boys. Hmm. Teachers are closer to girls than they are to boys. Isn't that interesting? If it had been the other way around and it was teachers are closer to boys than they are to girls, I bet there would have been a firestorm. No, not when it's the other way. Second thing it's taught us is that teachers have more conflicts with boys than they do with girls. Teachers have more conflicts. They're closer to girls. Are we getting a picture here? I think we're starting to get a picture. And then they talked about the five things that that the uh, teachers liked in students. Here they are. Rigid, conforming, orderly, passive, and dependent. Hmm. Let's go with those again. Rigid, conforming, orderly, passive, and dependent. It doesn't sound too much like boys, does it? Probably not. This is from the research. And then the last little study is that... Uh, Teachers tend to reject non-conforming and aggressive children. Teachers tend to reject non-conforming or aggressive children. Now, you know what that sounds like. That sounds like, uh-oh, the boys are in trouble again. So right from the very start, teachers tend to be closer to girls. And they tend to like the things that girls do. And, of course, there's this in-group bias with women where they, they prefer other women. And so the boys are on the out-group. So, in general, research tells us that boys are already at risk. They're already at risk from teachers, from female teachers. And the research actually says that it's the youngest and newest female teachers that are the most dangerous for the boys. But let's look at one study that goes beyond this. You know, these things tell us the general trends. And, you know, we've already talked about the hyperactive stuff and the... And the uh, uh, the having move stuff. I mean, all of these things are blatant. They're obvious. You can see it. And you don't need some research to tell you what's underneath that. It's, it's pretty clear that masculinity has just been basically bashed. And uh, boys tend to have more masculine characteristics, and therefore they have a tougher time. But this study is a little bit different. It's a study about playful boys and girls and class clowns. The first thing they did with the study is they um, took all the students, I think there was 100 or so, and they measured some indices and found out which ones were playful and which ones were not. And the playful idea, you know, there's five things they listed for what a playful child was. And those things are, one, the playful child has physical spontaneity. You know, they like to, uh, their activity level's good, their physical coordination's good, they're moving, they're fluid physically, right? Number two, social fluidity, spontaneity. Move in and out of social play fluidly to share and show leadership and peer play. Those are the kinds of things that these playful children showed. Third, cognitive spontaneity, imagination, creativity, creating roles and characters. I mean, these are really creative, smart kids, right? Four, manifest joy. These playful kids had high manifest joy. That means exuberance, joy, and enthusiasm. Sounds like good kids, eh? And the last thing was sense of humor. These are the kids who could joke, could take a joke on themselves, could tell a joke to other kids. So those five things, boy, that's a pretty nice group of kids, right? You would think so. I think it's a really nice group of kids. Now, these kids, they then they measured whether the kids thought this playful group was popular or not. And sure enough, both the boys and the girls decided that, yes, this playful group is popular. You know, they, they liked to play with them. They were preferred playmates. And they liked them. They just liked them, right? And they also found that the playful children, like themselves, and they saw themselves as being popular. Okay. 
Okay, so far so good. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The research found that there were an equal number of playful girls and playful boys. Hmm. Equal number of playful girls and playful boys. Interesting, eh? That was, the other thing they found was that the, the kids did not see the playful children as being disruptive or being a problem. They just thought they were funny and had fun with them, right? They looked forward to being with these children because they were these playful kids who had all those five characteristics. So, you know, that's, that's a pretty good group, a pretty good group. But guess what? Let's quote from the research. Research says, beginning in first grade, teachers showed their distaste for playful boys consistently viewing them as disruptive in the classroom and as least socially skilled and assigning them the label of class clown. Hmm. Now, keep in mind here, they only labeled the playful boys this way. They did not see the playful girls as disruptive, even though they had the same kinds of behaviors. And it gets worse as we go along. Okay, let's quote again from the research study about what they found. And here's what they said. One of the most significant discoveries of the study was the antipathy held by teachers for playful boys from the earliest primary grade. Hmm, let's read that again. One of the most significant discoveries of the study was the antipathy held by teachers for playful boys from the earliest primary grade. And for those of you who might not know what antipathy means, now, one definition is a deep-seated feeling of dislike, aversion. Okay, now remember, researchers choose their words very, very carefully in their studies. And this is exactly what they meant. A deep-seated feeling of dislike or aversion. In all grades, teachers viewed playful boys as the most disruptive in the classroom, consistently more so than less playful boys and all girls. In other words, it was the playful boys that got singled out as being called disruptive and a problem. Hmm. So they're kind of going along, along with what we've said before about they're closer to girls, they get more conflicts with the boys, right? You were seeing that kind of play out here. And then... You know, the first and second grade, the, the, um, both boys and girls saw the playful kids as being popular and they liked them as playmates and not as a problem and not as disruptive, right? But then something happened in the third grade. Now, the teachers all the while, of course, were thinking the boys were, you know, these bad guys, right? So, and in the third grade, listen to this. In third grade, however, things took a dramatic turn. While children continued to view more and less playful children differently, they now paid careful attention to their gender and constructed a sharp distinction between playful boys and playful girls. Most significantly, their views of boys who were very playful completely reversed in that they now came to view them as least preferred playmates with lowest social status. Let's read that last little part again in that they now came to view them as least preferred playmates with lowest social status. So somehow, the perceptions of these children, second and third graders, these are little guys, the perception of these children was that these boys were fine in first grade. They were fine in second grade. But suddenly in third grade, they really don't like them. They see them as the lowest in the totem pole. What happened? Listen to this. We strongly suspect that the cause of such a substantial, considerable turnaround is rooted in the eventual influence exerted by teachers directly and indirectly on playful boys' self-perceptions and those of their classmates. So what are these folks saying? The researchers are saying that it was the teachers that turned the perceptions of these second and third graders against the boys. That's mind-blowing. That's absolutely crazy. And to me, this is nothing but relational violence. Relational violence. I mean, they're turning one section of a class against another section of the class. That's nutty. 
And remember, these were boys that had all those five wonderful characteristics. These were boys who thought highly of themselves and who others thought highly of. Suddenly, in the third grade, they turn into being the bad guys. They're not liked. And suddenly, even the boys felt bad about themselves. They saw themselves as being least liked. So their self-perception went zip down to the bottom, all because somehow it got turned around there, and most likely, according to the researchers, by the teachers. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you something. I've been doing therapy with people for over 30 years, and I've seen a lot of abusive families, a lot of them. And the physically abusive ones are one thing, but there's emotionally abusive families are quite another. And what do those families do? They turn one side of the family against another. They do the same thing these teachers are doing. Frankly, what I see here is this is abuse. This is abusive to turn children away from each other. That's absolutely insane. And looks like relational violence to me, and it looks like an emotionally abusive environment for boys. And the guys out there, think of your elementary school days. Think of whether you experienced anything quite like that and how your perception of yourself and the perception of other students changed towards you and what that might have been about. And let's keep in mind, men are good, as are you. Like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. And come see me on Patreon. We're having a good time on Patreon these days. The, uh, there's a lot of interaction on the forum with guys talking to other guys from all around the world about what's going on in their lives and, and about their hobbies and about uh, all kinds of things, their, their relationships. And uh, it's good stuff. So come on and join us. We'll see you.